In the last video, we talked about how one can create a programming language by defining tokens and grammar. Be sure to check out that video if you already haven't. In this video, we're going to create our own little compiler to validate the declaration section of a C program. We're going to use two language tools, Lex and Yak, or Flex and Bison, to accomplish this. So first we're going to install Flex and Bison, install the syntax highlighting for Flex and Bison on Sublime, explain the code files, and then run this bad boy on a sample file. So let's get started. I'll share links on how to install Flex and Bison for Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac down in the description below. If you are using Mac OS, I highly recommend installing Homebrew or Mac ports. You can save a lot of time. For this project, we'll be using Sublime Text. It's a really cool text editor that can be used for practically any project. It's very popular because of its speed and amazing syntax highlighting for nearly every language. If you open any Lex or Flex file, you'll see that it's just a plain text that's very difficult to read. This is because Sublime doesn't recognize Lex or Flex code. We can fix this by installing the syntax highlighting code in Sublime's packages folder. To do so, hover over Sublime Text on the top, select Preferences, and Browse Packages. We get a list of all the languages where syntax highlighting is installed. Get the path by right-clicking on any of these. Copy this path to the terminal while making sure you escape the spaces. Here's a quick command line tip. We need to get into this directory, but we already typed this path in the last command. So instead of just typing cd and then copying and pasting the entire path onto the next command, just type cd and type two exclamation signs. The double exclamation sign signifies the last command executed. It comes in pretty darn handy. Now we need to install flex and bison here. For flex, we'll use TextMate's implementation. Clone their repository in the packages folder, and on restarting Sublime, the Lex or Flex code will be more readable. For Yak or Bison, we'll use Bitbucket Syntax Highlighter. We just do the same thing, clone their project and restart Sublime. I included the links to both down in the description below, so just go and check them out. These syntax highlights aren't really that great, but at least they're better than before. In any case, if a better syntax highlighter comes out in the future, you'll know how to install it. So yeah, cool. Okay, so now let's take a look at the code files, by starting with the lex file. The lex file has three main parts, separated by double percentage signs. The first part is a list of header files and function definitions encapsulated in percentage curly braces. The second part is a list of acceptable tokens, and the final part is for C user-defined functions. y.tab.h is generated by Yak, and it defines the list of tokens that we mention here. In the next section, we start by defining data type tokens. Although struct can be considered a data type token, we consider it as a struct token separately because of its unique syntax. Then we define single character tokens. We also define character, integer, and floating point values. From here, we start getting more generic into array identifiers, identifiers, and strings. When a line feed character, which is the backslash n in this case, is encountered, yyLineNo is incremented. yyLineNumber keeps track of the line number in the C input file. And whenever any other token is encountered, we just call the invalid token function, which I'll describe later. Um, how this works is that whenever a token is encountered, it is stored in a variable called yytext. It is compared with these list of acceptable token formats from top to bottom. The first time it finds a match, the corresponding code on the right-hand side is executed. If, say, we encounter the token int, this is stored in yytext, 
and matched up against the token list. Since it is present in the beginning itself, the corresponding C code in curly braces is executed. Here, int is stored in yylval. yylval is required to pass tokens recognized from the lexer to the parser. So this variable yylval is considered the bridge between the two files. You only need to pass the values through yylval if you plan to use the value in the parser. For other tokens, you don't really need to worry about it. And this data type could have been anything else like string value or blah blah. I just use data type because it makes sense to me. In the third and final section, we have implemented a few functions. YYWrap is called when the end of input file is reached. It returns one to signal the end of input, which is true for our case as we input one file at a time. YY error is invoked when an invalid token or sequence is encountered. It takes in the error string as input and we display the line number and error message just like you would see in a compiler. And I also define an invalid token function to catch stray tokens in case they don't invoke YY error. This may not be the most efficient way to define tokens or write this function, but it's not half bad. Now, let's take a look at the yak file. Like the lex file, this also consists of three sections. The first part is a list of header files and function definitions encapsulated in percentage curly braces. We include the standard input output header file to use basic functions like printf. String.h is used to perform string operations. We also include two user defined header files that I'll explain after this yak file. After that, we declare a number of data types and functions. If extern precedes their declaration, then those variables or those functions are actually defined externally. That is, not in this file. In between the first and the second sections, we define the nature of error messages generated by yak. In this case, we tell it to return a detailed error message. For example, something like unexpected integer, expected equal symbol. Without these two percentage defined statements, the error message would have just said syntax error without providing further details. It's pretty neat to know. Percentage union allows us to define the members of yylval. I didn't mention this in the lex file because it's easy to explain here, but yylval is actually of type union. This is where we define its members. For example, Everything I store in yylval.datatype is of type car star, just like the int example I mentioned in the lex file. Percentage token is used to define tokens passed from the lex file. If the value of the token is passed, be sure to indicate the type in angular braces. Percentage type is used to define symbols used below that are not tokens passed from the lex file. They are a combination of these tokens. So everything I mentioned here was between the first and the second section. Now let's take a look at the actual second section, which is the meat of this file. It is here that we define the grammar for our language, which is C in this case. Since we are dealing with declaration statements, it makes sense to make this declaration the root of the tree. Every statement in our input C file must be a declaration statement of one of the following forms mentioned. If the statement does not conform to any of these forms, then yy error is invoked and this angular bracket stops execution. Since it stops checking for errors after the first is encountered, I guess it's more like an interpreter than a compiler. So, well, <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, in the third section, we have the main function, which is the starting point of execution. Here, we call yyparse, which initiates the tokenizing and parsing discussed until now. It's an amazing function. Since the program stops on encountering an error, yyparse will return only if no errors are found. So it's safe to say that if a program reaches this point, there are no errors in the input C file. Now let's take a look at the user-defined header files. 
data underscore type is a character array that holds the data type for the current declaration statement. This can be used to check for valid assignments during initialization. No of identifiers is the number of identifiers in the input file. Every identifier has a value and a data type. So for the statement int a semicolon, identifier of zero dot value would be a, and identifier of zero dot data type would be int. Now I'll explain every single function here. Clear buffers is used to clear the value of the data type stored. This is called before every declaration statement encountered. Store data type is used to store the data type of the current declaration statement. Retrieve data type can be just considered a getter, I guess. It's just created to make things look uniform. Is duplicate checks if the newly encountered identifier has already been declared before. It returns true if it has and false if it has not. Extract identifier is used exclusively when array identifiers are encountered. It extracts the name of the array. So this function extracts a from a two-dimensional array a of 5069. Store identifier is used to add the encountered identifier to the list of identifiers. From the yak file, you notice that this function is only called if the identifier is not a duplicate. This ensures that all the identifiers in the identifier array are unique. Assignment error is called in case any invalid assignment is made. And duplicate identifier error is called if the isDuplicate function returns true in the yak file. Now, the funny thing about validators.h is my extensive notes on this page. I over explained things here, but it's still understandable. This was actually a part of a project and one of my teammates was asked to explain this code file the following day even though he had no coding experience in C, and that's why I did all of this. Nonetheless, I'll explain the functions here too. IsValidAssignment checks if the data type which we passed from the later part of the yak file is the same as the current data type of the identifier. In the yak file, if this returns false, then the assignment error function is called and the program terminates, because like I said, it's kind of like an interpreter. The remaining functions i to a, f to a, and c to a are used to convert integers, floating point numbers, and characters into ASCII type. This is just used to pass these values into the assignment error function, which takes a common string parameter. Cool, I've explained the four major files that will get everything running. Now, let's consider a C sample file that we will pass into our little software. In this sample file, we only have declaration and initialization statements for basic types like int, float, and car. Even struct, array, and functions are also supported. To execute this code, go to your terminal and enter your working directory and type the following four commands. First, type yak with an option D and the name of the yak file that you want to execute. This command tells yak to generate the y.tab.c parser file and option D signals yak to generate the header file too, which is y.tab.h. Next, type lex followed by the lex file name. This will generate the tokenizer or the lexer, lex.yy.c. We compile these two C files and generate the output file called output with this last command. If everything checks out, then execute the output file while giving a C sample file as input. Now notice how it gives a pretty detailed error message. Error on line 12, duplicate identifier man found. If we go to our file, sure enough on line 12 we find an integer man when there's already a function called man. Now let's say we add a comma after D and execute the output file on the sample. Now we get an error on line 7, syntax error, unexpected semicolon expecting identifier or array identifier, which is actually true. After this comma, we should ideally put another identifier or define another array. Notice how only the first error encountered is displayed and not the man error. 
This is because I configured it like so in the yak file. Okay, now let's put a hyphen after F in the first line. This is not a valid identifier as only acceptable characters are alphabets, digits, and underscore for any valid identifier. Executing the sample, we get error on line one, invalid token hyphen. This error looks different from the rest because it was called from the invalid token function of my lex file. Okay, let's fix these three errors and now run the sample file on the output once again. And sure enough, we get no errors. This is a pretty decent validator for the declaration section of a C program. I'll put this code up on GitHub so that you can take a look at it. But know that the grammar is pretty screwed up. It works enough for you to understand the concept. But don't expect this to work for all the declaration and initialization scenarios. I hope you got something out of this video. If not, just replay the video until you understand. <laughs> Now that we have the brains of the program set up, I'm going to try to create a cool GUI in the next video so that it will actually look like a cool application. So keep an eye out for that video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button on your way out. Let's see if we can get 10 likes on this video. God, 10, please. I'll be a happy dude. Well, see you guys.